Aloha. Welcome to Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm your host, Tim Apicella. Today's title is Traffic and Gridlock Are Only Words. Try living it. For those who have to commute each day bumper to bumper for one or two hours each way, for those who commute each day round trip in stop and go traffic for two or four hours traffic or gridlock, they're just words, but they're an endurance that is hard to describe but required to perform. But that's what we're gonna to try to do today. With me today are my guests, Leo Bright and Stephen Hanneman, who commute to downtown Honolulu each day. For today's show, we get to hear their story, their commute. Stephen, Leo, thank you very much for coming on to Moving Hawaii Forward. I appreciate you taking the time out and uh, willing to talk about your experience. I have to admit, it, it takes courage to talk about what you guys do each and every day because it's a big part of your life. It takes time out of your day and um, it's not always easy to talk about because there's so many impacts about traffic. And the reason I wanted to have you on is because when, when we talk about traffic, it's, it's, it's just that, it's a word. When we talk about gridlock, it's, it's just that, it's a word. Bumper to bumper, they're just words. But they have real impacts to people's lives and that's why I want to thank you very much for coming on and, and speaking about it. So, Leo, I'll start with you first. Um, describe your daily commute and how far you, you drive, where you start, and uh, just tell us your story. Well, first of all, thanks, Tim, for um, giving me the opportunity to address this issue. I, I have been doing this for over 20 years, and uh, my day typically starts at about 3.30 to 4 o'clock to get to town. Uh, I, I work at the convention center, and rather, even if I start at 8 o'clock, I need to be in town by 6 o'clock to avoid any fender bender. If there's a fender bender, then they'll add on another hour. And that hour translates to uh, the rest of the uh, commuters till uh, the next two to three hours it, it carries over. But typically, you need to plan your day ahead. Uh, and allow yourself minimum two hours mm -hmm. getting. And there's a magic time that you want to get out of town to. If you can't make it out of town by three, not not three ten, <laughs> not three five, three or five. <laughs> but if you can make it be uh, before then, then you you uh, at least reduce yeah. a, at least an hour and a half. So three o'clock's that yabba dabba do time where Fred Flintstone slides off the brontosaurus yeah. into oh. his car and off they go. There's this magic yeah. wand that you wave <laughs> <laughs> and hope that you get you get there. Get that three o'clock. So window. you're telling me that you have to wake up at you you're you're on the road at four o'clock in the morning just yes. so you can start work at eight o'clock. Yes. That's and what time do you go to bed? Well, it depends. Yeah. Uh, I've been. Uh, at times, I, I was uh, working two to three jobs, so sometimes I would work from uh, five in the morning uh, till 10 o'clock at night, wow. and then reach home at uh, one o'clock. <laughs> 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 and that's at night. Right. By the time you're uh, at home, and if you don't get pulled over by the police for weaving on the road, <laughs> Because you're tired. Because you're tired. Okay, let's clarify that, because you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> and the police want to tell you the, uh, the, the basics of uh, safety, safety and yeah. forgets to give you back your ID. <laughs> <laughs> you meet them at 1 o'clock. Uh, my type of job, which is uh, I'm a chef, so in the food business, uh, your adrenaline is going, so it takes a while to, uh, mm -hmm. to just shut off the machine and... So, so typically, I fall asleep at 2, get up at 3.30. That's, that's wild. That's brutal. Let me ask you one question, Steve. I'll get right to you. Um, if you get off at 3 o'clock, what time do you get home in Kapolei? Okay, if. That's if. Yeah. Not, and that's a really, actually, a perfect world. It's a good day. Uh, I would get home by 5. Okay, so there's a solid two-hour one-way commute one way and then you're getting up extra early so you avoid that two hour okay so okay that, that describes how traffic and preparing for the gridlock impacts your life there's a lot more questions i'm going to ask you um but steve tell me about your commute hi tim and thanks for having oh, me you, on the show thank you so we for can coming appreciate talk it. about my commute i moved out to couple a about eight years ago things have changed drastically since then the traffic has just compounded and gotten worse and worse. And as it goes along, I was looking for other ways. I have an electric vehicle. 
I'm one of those lucky people that everybody hates that gets to use the zipper lane. And that does save me a little bit of time. How much? Between Coppola and downtown, it can save me 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Which, it adds up. Yeah. If I miss my window, I'm the same as Leo here. I try and get out of my house by 5.15 at the latest. It's about every minute I'm past 5.15, it adds two minutes to my commute. It's just Every like minute clockwork. is 15 minutes added. Every minute is another, is two minutes added to the trip. How long have you been doing this? Well, I moved to Coppola eight years ago. Okay. Like I say, and the traffic's gotten a lot worse. If I leave my house after 515, it just gets longer and longer. A beautiful day with light traffic, a holiday. Mm -hmm. I like holidays. Yeah. I can get to work down at Aloha Tower Marketplace, mm -hmm. sort of the HBU campus there. I can do it in 35 minutes. And that's going fairly close to the speed limit, the normal Hawaii traffic. Right. If I leave my house at 530, that can be an hour, hour and 15 minutes. The longest it's taken me with accidents trying to get to work on time is almost three hours. And that's 24 minutes. I mean, miles. if you really think about it, each and every day, every year, mm -hmm. times every year, times another year and another year, um, that's a big chunk out of our lives being taken out. And oh. that's time you're not spending with your family, with your children. Uh, there's times that you're not taking care of your own health because you could be working out or exercising once you get home. Um, there's just a whole multitude of activities that you're, you're sort of missing because you're basically like everyone else trying to commute downtown and that's stuck on the same H1 roadway. Let's look at it this way. I like to do numbers. Okay. If I'm being conservative <clears throat> and saying I'm only going to spend an hour commuting each direction, it's a good day. That's 10 hours a week during a work week, 520 hours a year. I'm sitting in my car and I can't do anything. I'm just stuck in traffic, a minimum. Translate that to productivity and work week, that's 13 weeks worth of hours. So you probably wouldn't agree with the national studies that for Honolulu, the average um, time commuters are stuck in traffic is going to go from 47 hours to 50 hours a year. That sounds low then. That's from misleading. What I'm hearing. And I yeah. actually heard that story and read some of it, and it said time wasted in traffic. That mm -hmm. doesn't spend, that's not time commuting. Yeah. That's just slowdowns as a result of heavy traffic and not all your drive time. Right. Okay. So it is kind of misleading, very misleading. I, that's not that. That's, okay. <laughs> that's so not Hawaii. That's misleading, not reality. <laughs> misleading statistics. Uh, as, um, I think it was. I can't remember right now, but it was lies, damn lies, and statistics. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. um, Leo, let me ask you a question. With the amount of time you commute, how has that impacted your home life? Um, oh, first of all, I like how he put together the numbers and the math, and it really uh, began to dial in on the actual uh, accumulated time that you spend in just trying to get here to there. And uh, how it affected me, I, I would carefully think the job that is offered, because uh, in reality, you pay to work. You put in, you, you look what the gas prices are uh, versus what the wages you're going to have and the upkeep of the uh, vehicle. And so those things had to equate to what uh, you were earning. And so I would be more selective on the types of jobs that I would uh, be offered. Again, I'm a chef, so my uh, opportunities are pretty uh, broad. I can do personal chef, I can do uh, teaching. But uh, along the lines that, as far as jobs, there has been a lot of promises to create jobs that you can work at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had the Ihilani. Uh, we recently had the uh, Kamakani Ali'i, uh, the, one of the largest malls on the island. But my experience with that, I mean, most recently, I, I, try, to, I try to get in with the hotel. The uh, reason is because they have the, the wage scales that I'm looking for. And they promised first, first pick, and we, would, we had a special uh, job fair just for us. Whereas I went there, I realized that they already hired out six I weeks see. in. So finding work in Kapolei is not going to be as easy as, um, I think it's D, D, um, D. H. Horton or D.R. Horton said that there's going to be the creation of potentially 7,000 jobs as a result of the uh, Opabili 
uh, project. We'll get to that in, in a bit. I, I was what I try to uh, get to is when you when you spend two hours uh, one way or more, uh, what's it do to you mentally? I mean, are, physically, are you are you drained? Are you fatigued? How does it affect you, your health and your me your mental? Well, I'm glad you asked that because um, it became like I told you, I work long hours, and at times, because uh, of the events, you have seven days a week you can be working. It became, I, I needed a calendar to know where I'm at, uh, what job I should be at, and it seemed to be one big long day, the okay. same day, repeti uh, repetitive. And as far as, uh, you know, you leave work to work dark, you come home dark, you come, you uh, leave work, everybody's sleeping, you come home, everybody's sleeping. So you're not getting a lot of family time. Uh, you gotta send me pictures. <laughs> okay, well that that's 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 quite a statement. Yeah, um, that's quite a statement. Just to make it, I mean, we, I mean that uh, you can go into a whole subject of what it takes to to, to raise a family. Yeah, and what nice. what uh, you know what type of uh, income would it take to support a, a typical family? Yeah, Steve, you. Similar to what Leo just said, but not having a family life is something that you end up with just by the fact that you have to commute. If we go back to the basic numbers of an eight-hour workday and an hour lunch, if you're lucky, plus two to three hours commute, you're looking at 11 and a half, 12 hours you're gone from home. You have to factor that into what your wages are and say, okay, I'm working 12 hours a day. I'm gone from my house. Is this job really worth it? Mm -hmm. And sometimes on the commute home, I'll call my wife and we'll just talk on the hands-free. And I get comments all the time. The only time we ever talk is when you're in the car. Well, I'm spending two and a half days. I should be at home right. sitting in that car. Well, that leads me to my next question because, um, you know, if you are in gridlock, bumper to bumper, what do you do to occupy your time? You, you can't text. Um, you can do nope. hands-free communications, yep. but um, you leave so early, who are you going to talk to? And Steve, you leave early enough, who are you going to speak to in the morning at least? Yeah, that's true. Nobody. Um, so <laughs> what is it? Do you listen to radio? How do you how do you unwind when you're being wound up? I guess is my question. For, for me, uh, hmm. the radio is my best friend. It tells you uh, what route to avoid. <laughs> how to get home quicker. <laughs> you need to And a few attention. jokes along the way, huh? Uh, only, well, Depends I mean, on what radio station yeah, you're listening yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You have to have a sense of uh, patience, and I'm still working on it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, trying to uh, ignore people telling you you're number one. And But uh, what really can you do? And that's the thing I realized, that uh, we became uh, more, we accepted this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm, I what I talk about, uh, people have it even harder that they live in uh, Makaha, Waina, Oj. It's longer. See, yeah. you, you add on another 45 minutes. We're going to take a break, but I want to get back to this question um, with you and Steve. I do want to leave one comment here. You know, they say, you know, Hawaii is really truly the land of aloha, but how can you maintain your aloha, aloha when you're being compressed in a car for four hours a day? And I guess we'll get back to that, that statement when we come back from this commercial break. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aloha and Happy New Year. It's 2017. Please keep up with me on Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and just energy future. Please join me on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Reg Baker, and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. We highlight success stories in Hawaii of both businesses and individuals. We learn their secrets to success, which is always valuable. I hope to see you on our next show. Aloha. Hi, welcome back. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host for Moving Hawaii Forward. 
And with me today, my guests are Leo Bright and Steve Hanneman, and we're talking about their commutes and their daily challenges with getting to and back from work. So welcome back. Thank you. I wanted to get back to that comment about, you know, we are the land of Aloha. How do you maintain your Aloha when you are, you know, three to four hours in traffic every day? How do you do that, Leo? Well, I try to pick up some at Walmart. Before, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before I say Aloha. <laughs> okay, good answer. Steve, how do you do it? Uh, deep breath. Um, about the only thing I've found that I can do that helps a little bit is to actually, when people want to change lanes, I let them. Mm -hmm. And that makes some people mad. Believe it or not, I get them people back. honking at me behind when I let somebody over really? who wanted to come over. But just doing something like that kind of relieves the stress because otherwise you're, it's a competition. Yeah. Well, and it moves tra it, traffic it, faster by letting people in. I, I spoke does. to um, a driver yeah. for the emergency truck for the state during commute yeah. hour, and he said if people just let each other in when they see a, an indicator, flow of traffic would move so much faster. I agree, totally. So you do that just to maintain your sanity? To maintain my sanity. And hopefully I'll, somebody will return the favor someday, but you never know. You pass it forward. Yeah, pass it forward. Okay. Um, has, do you feel stressed out when you're done with your commute or before you start? Or are there any symptoms of stress uh, that you guys experience? Because, you know, that's the number one thing they cite yeah. in all studies, health studies, is stress, the stress of commuting. Uh, I'm just wondering, personally, does, do you feel the impacts, either overtly or, or not? Well, I realize even just the just commute, even if you just commuted, okay, A to B, no work today, go home, mm -hmm. you wipe out. The, You're just, wiped out. Uh, Your energy is wiped out. Yeah, but... And it has nothing to do with getting older. <laughs> <laughs> the older part is when, is when you can uh, stay in a car for, yeah. for three days and... <laughs> Still have a sense of humor, yeah. but uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, I think you become numb, but you're not up. You're not. You're not really. Uh, you know. You're not in the mood to go out pull weeds or go do the things that starting to pile up that you can only do on your day. It's day a out. really important point. Um, I had an hour and fifteen commute uh, each day one way, and I, I distinctly remember that is that I just didn't have any energy. I just didn't feel like really engaging with my children who were very young at the time. I just wanted to sit and hit the couch and just veg out. But you know, that's the death knell. Once you hit the couch, you're done. <laughs> it's tough. Pretty Steve? much. One thing that it does fatigue you. And yeah. Sitting in the car sounds like a sedentary thing. There's nothing going on. It should be relaxing. But you are tense the whole time. Stop and go traffic. People trying to cut in front of you or slamming on their brakes. So you've got to constantly focus on what's going right. on around you or you end up causing the three-hour delay for Leo here. Yeah. Because <laughs> you run into somebody. Right, right. So it, 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 sometimes I've called my wife and said, you've got to keep me awake. I'm just exhausted and I'll get home and that's it. Like Leo, you're just beat. Well, that's funny you mentioned sleep or fall asleep yeah. because I think they're, they're discovering right now that the number one or one of the major increases for accidents, even fender benders, is the fact that people are falling asleep at the wheel. Well, and after 12 to 14 yeah, hour day, I don't know how you're working. doing that, Leo, but um, that is nuts. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I, I, I'm going to hit the question. Since you're from Makakila, you're in Kapolei, I've got to ask a question about this pending uh, real estate development that's coming online or will be coming online, known as Ooopili. Um, there's going to be approximately 11,750 new homes out there. Uh, the developer has promised that there will be a multitude of new jobs that people who buy into the project may have the opportunity of working in Kapule. I'm not buying that exactly because job promise is just that, it's a promise. There's no, there's no guarantee. Mayor Muthi Hanneman, no offense to your namesake, um, promised that there'd be about 10,000 jobs for the light rail project and that is not, that has not come to be. And then at best, maybe there's a thousand jobs that's been created. So, given the fact that this, and it is the largest project in this state that uh, has ever been approved, um, what, what's your viewpoint, Steve? What's your, what's your opinion about this new project? Um, a large percentage of our traffic problems right now are caused by the price of housing in Hawaii. The closer you get to downtown, the more expensive housing is. It goes up dramatically once you get within a few miles of the downtown core. So people have been forced to move further and further out of town. 
to be able to afford housing. And as more people move in, more people move out. Ho Pile is just the latest example of, of what's going to happen. There will be a lot of people move there who have jobs downtown. Right. And it's going to increase the traffic. I don't... You'll probably ask a question about the rail sooner or later. Sooner or later, it's coming. It's going to come up. <laughs> it's coming. I'm pretty sure all those people moving to those houses in Ho'opili are not going to be riding the rail. Tell me why you think that. Because you know what? The council members that voted for this, mm -hmm. they, they bought that bill of goods. The land commissioner uh, uh, board, they bought that argument. Tell me why you think that's not going to be the case. Well, I've been where that rail station is in Kapolei, in the middle of the farm field. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near the regional transportation hub in Kapolei, which is, I can't figure out that logic. But what leads me to believe this more than anything is a discussion I had with one of the planners at a rail project meeting. Okay. I asked him specifically, what are the demographics of the people that are going to ride the rail? He says, I just don't see it. I sit in traffic every day. It's one or two people in cars, and none of them go from what I can tell to where the rail goes. And he said, well, we're not really targeting them. I said, what do you mean? You've only got three, four parking stations, and you're telling me 50,000 commuters a day are going to get off the roads. He says, well, we actually expect most of the people riding are the ones that are riding the bus. So they won't mind. They won't need parking. It's like, wow. okay, so you're going to cure the traffic problem by taking the people that are riding the bus and letting them transfer to a train and get on another bus. How is that going to help my freeway? I don't get it. Ho'opili is just going to add that many more cars to the road. So they're, let's they're say if I, um, let's say that each house out there in, in um, Ho'opili has at least 2.1 or 2.2 on average individuals per household. I would say at least 50% of them are going to get on the road. Yep, I agree. Most of them are not going to um, have the opportunity to work in Kapolei at a job that pays well enough or high enough that uh, they're going to be able to afford those houses and work, work just within miles of where they live. I would say most of them are probably going to have to go downtown still to find employment. Or they come from downtown and go out to work wherever they're going to work, but it doesn't matter which way they're going, they're going to be on the, mm -hmm. on the freeways. Okay. Leo, you've had time to think about this project and how much better or worse is that going to make your, your commute and um, your life? First of all, I uh, wanted to keep it clean, okay. so I'm not going to bring politics into it. Well, you can bring politics, but you still have to keep it clean. <laughs> but I like uh, uh, a lot of things uh, Steve brought up is uh, buying what we're being sold by the uh, politicians, the councilmen who voted for this. Um, my thing that I wanted to use my time for it, when we're talking about whole Pili, that is self-sustainability. Uh, we should be uh, moving more towards self-sustainability. Um, Hopili, also uh, Coral Ridge, has been the place uh, where they uh, produce the, all our uh, product and food right now, and it equates out to 45% of our food immediately here without relying upon uh, outside sources. Um, so. At one of these meetings that I went to just uh, last week uh, called uh, IAL, Important Agricultural Land, and explaining to us how they designate land uh, for agriculture and land for urban, uh, as the more they explained, the more confused they got. It, 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 it as if they're uh, describing the exact purpose and the use that uh, whole Pili has, uh, well, the, it, it's called a loon farm right now. It has a history of farming way back in the railroad days, and it has a history of being the best soil to produce this type of It's a very of important food. point. You've and it has a history mm -hmm. of having the only place on the island that has all this sun that you need to produce the product. If you, so in other words, you have some of the politicians promoting self-sustainability and we should become more in, more dependent on our own resources and yet they're taking away something that is already working. A lady that came to the meeting brought two items. One item, a basket full of locally grown item, uh, food that you can eat and then she brought out another item, a piece of brick representing the homes. We cannot eat brick 
And we need to start thinking about the future. The purpose of uh, people like Dr. Dudley and who are passionate about stopping this and has been fighting it for uh, his first, uh, as the issue became uh, uh, on the table. And the biggest thing is that if we don't uh, stop this, Ho'opili, the production of Ho'opili, we won't have a way to become self-sustainable. Uh, we already have something that is working. In other words, why recreate the wheel, move it someplace else. And like I said, I was going to keep this clean, so I didn't want to bring in the, the, the word money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I just did. did. <laughs> are, are we allowed to say that? You can say money. Um, <laughs> the question is, how was it used to get this project approved? Now, I am going to bring in the politis politician aspect here. Um, I did ask one of the representatives, that, uh, in, in fairness, he's a state representative, uh, Representative uh, Matt Lopresti. I asked him to the show, and um, they declined. In fact, the quote that uh, I was given as to why he didn't want to talk about this was the following. With all respect to what you're doing and the information you wish to present to the public, Representative Loperesti is hesitant to discuss this on a TV show. Okay, um, I understand that, but um, you're as constituents. You're talking about the problems. We've just heard you for the last 29 minutes. I believe that the politicians who are involved with either the state or with the city county, they need to get on this show and explain it from their perspective of why the traffic is the way it is, how it's going to get better, and how Opapili is a great idea. So um, I did ask um, <clears throat> Council Member Pine to come on the show. They're looking into it, and I hope to have her on because uh, actually it was the city and county that approved the Opapili project. And, um, you know, in all fairness, they should be able to present their position and, and explain their vote. And um, that's, I think that's critical for everyone who lives out in your area to hear and know why and how this thing got approved. Um, there's going to be more Hopabilis behind Hopabili. There's going to be more, more projects, trust me. So I only have 29 minutes, 30 minutes for this show, and I apologize. I wanted to get to rail, and I wanted to get to a lot more things. Um, but I want to thank you, Stephen and Leo. I want to thank you very much for coming on the show and sharing your experience with us.